Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. And uh, today's bike review is going to be another one of mine. It's what happens when you put a CB500 onto a strict exercise regime to bulk it up a bit. You get a Honda Hornet 900, known as the 919 in the States because the Hornet name belonged to a car. Because obviously it's so easy to mistake a car for a motorbike, but that's the joy of trademarks. Right, let's get the bike started and go for a bit of a ride. Once you get the bike moving, the weight certainly seems to drop off. The seating position is pretty much the same as a CB500 with the uh, same wide bars, same mirrors that don't need any extensions or adapters or replacing. And uh, the seat height is just a little bit higher. Outside of town on the A roads near where I live, nice and twisty, ones that I enjoy. And it will quite easily change direction left to right as you go around the various twisty bends. Slow speed riding as well for in town, again it's dead easy to uh, put the bike in gear, pull off and go into a full lock turn. Even motorway cruising is quite easy on one of these, you don't have any wind protection so you do need to be used to a naked bike to do something like the thousand miles that I did a couple of years ago in 16 and a half hours. The Ron Haslam School also used to use the these School. as instructor bikes. I think it was to try and sell a few more units. They weren't the biggest sellers in the UK. And in the last two years that they were available, 06 and 07, Honda only sold just over 250 of them. The main reason of this was there was something else available from Triumph. The Speed Triple 955i and later the 1050. Bigger engine, more power, faster, more larry and uh, people number chasing would have bought these instead. But it's a real shame that these bikes aren't better appreciated. They're uh, nice bikes to ride, plenty of torque across the range, a uh, little bit of a problem with fueling which I'll talk about in a moment. The engine is a bit of a refugee from one of the earlier fire blades. It's a 919cc four cylinder inline triple with fuel injection and um, they're a nice simple design uh, coupled with a steel spine frame which is a bit unusual but it does handle very well you can't feel any problems with the frame flexing or doing anything silly if you get one of these you'll notice how on and off the throttle is it's pretty horrible to be honest um, I couldn't adapt myself to riding to it because I have other bikes as well that didn't have this problem so I ended up putting a power commander on it or actually getting BSD to put one on it it made a little bit more power a little bit more torque certainly made it more friendly to ride unfortunately the insurance companies classify this as a stage one tune so you do pay more on the insurance for it with that annoyance being sorted out has anything else gone wrong with it uh, just out of warranty the front wheel bearings went at 16,000 miles i say just out of warranty it was about three or four months out of warranty pain in the neck got them swapped out and thinking how often is this going to happen um, a lot of miles later not been a problem again 98,000 miles saw the roller bearings go at the bottom of the shock. Um, yep, another small annoyance, not that expensive. And because I bought an, a centre stand for mine, it was quite an easy job for, to be done. Um, you imagine trying to get a rear shock off a bike where you can't actually put it on a centre stand. Um, you can't even use a paddock stand, you're going to need an Abbas stand or to put it onto some uh, axle stands to be able to hold it up so you can get the rear shock out. Centre stands, they're the a great thing on bikes I don't know why more of them don't have them at least as an option the instruments and equipment on the Hornet are nice and basic which suits me you've got a handful of idiot lights a couple of analog clocks on the left hand clock there's a multi display it displays the odometer trip 1 which I use for fuel because the bike doesn't have a fuel gauge trip 2 which I use for trips or anything else that I need to look at measuring and uh, yes, this bike has done over 100,000 miles. Uh, underneath the analogue again, TACO, on the, the right hand side, you've got another button. This toggles the clock on and off. Looking at the left hand handlebar grip, again, nice and simple. There's only four controls on here. You've got the horn, the indicators, the main and dip beams, and on the front, the trigger for the headlight flash. Right hand handlebar, again you've only got three controls on here, start, hazard switch, kill switch. 
well, a bike that's done over 100,000 miles, you'd think it'd be showing its age, particularly as this one's uh, 16 and a half now. But if you look at the shocks, the chrome is still all there. Hey, yeah, it needs a clean. I've been out on some mucky old roads today. You'll also see the little bit of bling I've added to this one, which is the stainless steel radiator guard. Comparing the downpipes to the Suzuki Gladius, again, have a look at that review and you'll see what I mean. These are nine years and 50 odd thousand miles older, and these are the original downpipes. Uh, the rest of the exhaust, yeah, it's starting to get a few bits of rust on it, but it's on 100,000 miles. Uh, that's what build quality is all about. The Nissin brakes are quite easy to work on. You can take the pin out there to drop the pads out, front and rear, and I'm still on the original discs at over 100,000 miles. I have got through the usual chains, brake pads and tyres as you would expect. The original Bridgestone BT56s, which were the original tyres for this bike, they were discontinued a long time ago, so if you see a bike with these on, the tyres are going to be very, very old. Uh, the recommendation was for the BT16, don't get those unless you only ride in summer. I could not get any heat into these tyres, they'd spin up in cold wet conditions I do ride year round so I switched to the BT23s and they're actually a very good tyre suited to the Hornet and the sort of riding that I do. I do have a set of luggage on the bike I've got a couple of 20 something litre side panniers and a 45 litre top box all by Givy. Um, the M11 rack here is brilliant you can actually strap stuff to it that isn't a top box um, something I find very useful it's a shame it isn't made anymore. It's a lot better than the plastic donuts for actually strapping stuff to that isn't a top box. Forks and rear shock both have some adjustment on them. Preload and damping on the forks and the same for the rear shock. Under the seat you have a little tool storage tray. Um, does get full of water, does get full of muck. I took the tools out because they're getting a bit rusty and took them into the Krieger bag that I keep on the back rack. One thing to be very careful of if you're delving under the seat and looking at taking the rear part of the fairing off, the uh, the tailpiece, be very very careful when you put it back on because it's possible to get the lock in the wrong position for actually disengaging the seat latch. The lock is part of the tail fairing and if you don't get it in the right position you won't be able to undo the seat and release it again afterwards. So before you put the seat back on make sure that you've got the arm in the right place to operate the lock. And now we get to the summary. Is the Honda Hornet 900 any good? For the riding I do, yes. I've had it 16 and a half years, but over 100,000 miles on it. It's never had a shim in all the time I've owned it. 16,000 mile valve service intervals, oil changes every eight, although I do mine every four, along with the filters. Um, the 4,000 mile service interval is basically, is it still there, has anything fallen off, and it's done. Really nice bike, really reliable, you can get it, everything you need to on it, apart from changing the throttle cables, which I did leave to John Lee's over in Heim Ferrers, because I'm uh, probably slightly too impatient and don't have quite as much space as they've got over there in their workshop in my garage, and at some point they would have been swearing and possibly cut knuckles as well. It's a great bike to ride, it's a great bike to own, I thoroughly recommend them. The only regret that I have is I didn't buy another one when I bought this so that I could uh, run this one for a hundred and something thousand miles and then switch to a brand shiny new one. Um, but yeah, they're, they're out there, you can find low mileage ones, 20,000 miles or less for two to three thousand pounds from a dealer probably less private sales um, just make sure that the seat latch works um, they the engines do sound a little bit on the rattly side not a problem they're uh, pretty solid honda units um, the only thing that does slightly concern me when the one came up when it went to a hundred thousand miles there doesn't look quite enough space for a seven segment display there so it might not go for two hundred thousand but uh, you never know we might see that come up at some point anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next review i've got a uh, cb500 review to do plus a load more kit ones so catch you then bye